And now I see this. Check this out. Because we're, we're talking about crypto and all that stuff. You know that 35% of all U.S. dollars that have ever been printed were printed in the last 10 months. Yep. Yep. I shared that when Check it out. Uh, first we got, came we got, on, we got, on the we got, show. We got this. You got to show the graphic if you can we find do, the graphic. We do. From, yeah. from St. Louis Fed. Oh org. My God. Yep. Look at this. So I saw this post. Some lefties were posting about it on Facebook. And they're, t and, and, and they're showing this graph from uh, F. It's, it's Fred, and it's uh, Economic Research, Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. And we can see 35% of all U.S. dollars. Dude, this is a huge yeah. warning sign uh, to diversify out of the U.S. dollar right now. So here's what the lefties well, were talking about. Someone posted this on Facebook saying, y'all are talking about universal health care, this, that, and this. Here's what I'm worried about. And someone responded with, we can deficit spend forever. And why would you be worried about that? Because a lot of lefties, like, I think AOC even mentioned this, will just deficit spend into massive debt forever. And then someone mentioned, that the guy who posted it was like, I'm worried about Weimar Germany. And then linked to a photo of people shoveling mm -hmm. German marks into a gutter. So I started reading about it. I don't think it's, it's the exact same thing. But because there was a, a desperate need to pay back the, the, it was reparations from World War One. They just kept printing money to try and keep spending it and paying back, you know, to, to keep the machine going, essentially. It's not identical. But right now, all this money is being printed because nothing's being produced. Now, that's a serious problem. Yeah. Nothing is being produced. So they give people money to buy what's remaining. That means the things I, I remember earlier in the year when everyone's like, oh, man, you know, what happens now with the, with the lockdowns and everything? And what did I do? I went to the store every so often, and I bought a normal supply of groceries. We didn't go crazy. We didn't run to the store and, and buy like 10 shopping carts of beans. We did buy, a, you know, like, like 20 cans of beans. And I was like, we'll get some beans. We'll put them in the pantry, right? And then I ordered these emergency food things. Why? The things you see on the shelf right now were made a while ago. And so when you start seeing no one working, when the restaurants are now shut down in New York, you know what that means? A lot of things are going to happen. For one, we're not insulated. We are, we are to a certain degree on shows like this. People who make digital content are going to lose tons of money when they shut down indoor dining because small businesses and restaurants will stop spending money on ads to get customers. More importantly, when people aren't going to work, they aren't making things. So what's going to happen eventually is you're going to have a, you're going to have a ridiculous amount of money from, from, the US, from the U.S. government being printed like crazy and nothing to buy with it. So what happens? You're going to have big old stacks of dollars and you're going to be like, I don't know, can't, can't buy anything with it. What do I need it for? And if you wait too long, the prices of stuff is going to skyrocket. It's it already, already up 20 well, percent. Check this but out. I'm talking Hold about on. Check skyrocket. This out. I, I put in my Amazon shopping cart a Galaxy tablet. I was like, I could, need, I could use a tablet so you know, I'm around the house. I could be looking at news and doing stuff. And then I forgot about it. I got an alert when I went to Amazon the other day, and it said price change from 500 to 650. Yep. Whoa. Yeah. For, for the are same thing. Most and most goods are going up dramatically. That's modest, especially raw goods, especially things that are used to produce other goods. They're becoming very limited in supply, and it's absolutely terrifying the bigger economic ramifications that are coming our way. Not only because of the lockdown, but because of the Federal Reserve. You said. If they start printing money like crazy, they already are. Most of that money, thirty-five yeah. percent. Yeah. Think about how. Yeah. how think, so, so when I was on the show a couple weeks ago, the first time I told you, uh, tw uh, what was it? Twenty-five percent. I forgot the wow. exact 23. number. Twenty-three point six. Yeah, twenty-three point six. <laughs> that number has already risen. It's going to continue to rise, and most of that money is literally going towards companies like BlackRock, one of the biggest asset uh, owning companies in the entire world that is literally in the Chinese stock market. So we are literally giving socialism to the super rich right now, and they're transferring that money to the Chinese stock take, market take, of take all a, places. Yes, take a look at this. Yep. From the street, and this is from October 15th, 23.6% of all U.S. dollars were created in the last year. In the last 23.6. Where are we at now? Well, according to a bunch of posts that are going around, I don't know if that's the, the exact correct number, but they say 35. Let's just assume that's correct. From October Two months later, we went from 23.6 to 35, 12 more points up. They are cranking out dollars. They're spinning that money machine like crazy. Now, some people have said that there's going to be rapid deflation because there's nothing to buy. So, but I honestly, I don't know if that makes a whole Who lot of sense. Who said that? There's just been posts on the internet saying, no, no, we're w facing what's serious. What's the logic? I guess the logic is... 
if there's nothing to use a dollar on and people aren't working, then they have very few dollars left and they hold them very tightly because all the money's being transferred to the, to the Amazons that Walt, you know, Walmart, the BlackRock, et cetera. Regular working class people don't have any money to spend, right? So that means when you say, I've got a gallon of, you know, a gallon of water, would you like to buy it? They go, I only got 10 bucks. Sorry, I'm not spending it. I got to hold on to this. And then they go, okay, then how about for five bucks? No way, dude. Okay, fine. Two bucks. Okay, yeah, fine. that's not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. People yeah, value happen. money yeah. over human life, unfortunately. <laughs> that's the, the way business works. The United works. States is indebted. We still don't have the official tallies from the Federal Reserve and their printing. But as of right now, $27.2 trillion. That's an insurmountable amount that can't be paid back no matter what you do. You could steal the wealth of all the billionaires and it won't even come close to running the U.S. government for one year. How much? Twenty-seven point four trillion dollars. Oh, it was seven. It was twenty-seven point two yesterday. How much of that is? It was twenty-seven point two yesterday, Tim. Like how much of that is compounded interest? Do you know? Check this out. Like what the Check principle this out. is and how much of it is interest? Check this out. From usdebtclock.org, oh, no. they say the U.S. federal debt to GDP in in 1980 was 34 percent. In 2000 was 55%, and now it's 128.6%. All right, sounds like inf inflection <laughs> yeah. has been reached. Yeah. We are producing more debt than goods. That's what exactly. I'm saying. People aren't making things anymore, and they're yeah. cranking out money to pay off debts they can't pay off. Yeah. Weimar Germany, dude. And then all of a sudden, people don't realize this. It was in like the span of one year. The, the German mark went from like 20 marks to the dollar to like, what was it, like 200 uh, billion yep. or two, yeah, I think 200 billion marks to the dollar. It was just people shoveling money yeah, into it's, dumpsters. That's the way I, compound interest works is it yeah. compounds on itself. And it, it's like a J curve and then it just goes yeah. straight up all of a sudden. And these people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez don't have any basic understanding of any math or logic or any common sense because if you look at her kind of larger plan of tax the billionaires, if you would right now confiscate all the wealth of all the billionaires in the United States, you would still not have enough money to run the U.S. government for one year. So people need to realize the amount of debt, the amount of money that this government is spending is absolutely insane. I remember going down to Venezuela. I remember going down to Zimbabwe. If you're lucky, you might be able to still find some of my reports. I remember also going to India when they had a currency reset and seeing the actual pain that the government caused people by, Which again, just manipulating <clears throat> the financial system. In India, they banned particular rupee notes that uh, they just said didn't um, matter anymore. So, so I landed in India and they literally the next day had a currency reset. The government announced if you have these very prominent bills, they don't matter anymore. And they did it because they wanted more people to pay taxes because they knew a lot of people were keeping their money either in uh, shoe boxes, in, in shoe boxes underneath their bed. Yeah. So after getting rid of all of these bills, the Indian people literally just had a few days to turn in all of their money to, to the, the government, to the banks that of course would keep a record and tax them accordingly on it. This is why and then those notes were be became useless that's afterwards. They, that's why they love Bitcoin. I don't know if they love, they Bitcoin, love Bitcoin, but the U.S. Treasury Department wants to restrict your access to Bitcoin and you being able to transact in a way that doesn't involve KYC, the big right. banks, and the they U.S. government. They love it, but they want control of it. And they yeah. love it because it's the, the ledger is public and they can see everything you've bought transferred to every single person yes. forever. Well, can't you can't hyperinflate it. Bitcoin. That's the thing. There's a set amount. That's true. Yeah. And you can't manipulate it. You can't print it out of thin air. And if you look at the dollar, the dollar is as strong as it is, mainly because of the U.S. military industrial complex and its use of force all around the world to make sure that the world trades in the dollar. Now, when the dollar hyperinflates and when the dollar hits the fan this is not only going to affect the united states this is going to affect the entire Dude. world yep. and that's why i've been looking at countries like chile that their currency is not actually backed by the dollar i've been looking at other kind of alternatives as well but i think you know we we really need to start paying attention to the alternatives out there because i'm telling you i mean it, it's it's insurmountable bro so i bought i bought yeah. bitcoin a month ago I, I've, I've been periodically buying bitcoin yeah me too um not like crazy or anything like that yeah. It's up, uh, what, 23 something thousand dollars. And, I've, you know, I'll, I, I'm, I'm, 
I'm talking to, you know, like you, you, if you guys know Max Kaiser, he's Love the him. Orange Pill Podcast. He's the one that told me about Bitcoin when it was still, I think, a dollar or a yep. few cents. And I told him to bug off. Dude's a prof. Because <laughs> I had to fight the globalists at Talk Bilderberg about the word Group. Is it, Max super Watford. rich and successful off of like trading and stocks and stuff? He's a, he's a financial market guy. He's a very entertaining guy. And you told him to screw off? Yeah. No, nah, when I was hanging oh, out with Max man. and yeah. his buddy told me to buy Square stock, I did. And it skyrocketed yeah. up to like 200, no, Dude, like 2,000 I own so much Bitcoin and I'm still sad when I see that it's up 27% in the last week. You know what's really just, funny? It's a sign that the dollar's failing. I sold 21 Bitcoin in like 2012 and I was excited. <sighs> wow. I was, I, I was, I was, and I, was I remember, like, I was like, what are you doing? Not then, but another no, time. No, 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 not that time. Another time you, you no, sold it again. That's not true. That's not true. I sold, I sold once and I think I probably sold it to you. Hell Maybe. yeah. I think I sold I it to know. you. Get rich. I, because I, it, I might it, or might not it, have some. It skyrocketed up to, to 20 bucks. And it was this huge. I think you did. You can actually spike. donate Bitcoin actually to Tim did. on TimCast.net. Yeah, I think. I don't. I got to. It was. I gotta, a, it was I a couple remember. hundred bucks. I was like, dude, like somebody just gave to me. I don't care. It's four hundred bucks, man. I could pay my rent. I was like, you want them? And you're like, okay. I'm like, here you go, buddy. Yep. 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 Uh-huh. <laughs> now, <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> so you yeah. think they're gonna do a reset, Luke? That um, they're gonna be like the reset all the, is already happening. All the, That's another thing people need to realize. The reset is now. It's happening now. Uh, John Kerry, who was a part of the Biden administration, said it's gonna come faster than people realize, and it's definitely going to come under the Biden administration. And we have to remember what, what's happening right now with the destruction of small and independent businesses, with people being thrown into poverty. There's a new report that says that eight million people have been thrown into poverty since june the reset is here it's happening and it's the largest transfer of wealth in recorded human history so if it looks the like rich India. have never been richer than they are right now and they're only going to become more powerful but listen than if, than ever there is there is a a threshold mm. that I, I call it breaking the barrier that you make a certain amount of money in your life you will never be poor again and so it's actually we're not talking we're saying the rich people I'm not talking about just Jeff Bezos, who's worth, what, like $180 billion or whatever. I'm talking about people of a couple mil. That right now, if you've got money to float on for the next couple of years, you're not going to be thrown into poverty. and Unless and you're sitting on pure cash with no assets, then I think you're in trouble. Because I mean, what they're going to do is they're going to say no, no, U.S. No, no, promissory listen, notes. making a good point here. No, yeah. look, if dude, if, if you it, somehow... You're talking about assets, if, not money. No, if you somehow came into a windfall of cash randomly, then sure, fine. But any any regular person who's got a couple million dollars certainly has hard assets. You're talking assets. about assets, not, I'm just, talking not about, just dollars. It's different. But, money is a Right, right, right. But the reason, that, the reason that's kind of a moot point is... You, someone didn't just wake up and have $2 million in cash. That doesn't happen. Well, so a lot of people are storing cash right now. I think what's going to happen no, is they're not. the government's, no, no. the government's going to be like... Regular US, people's assets are tied up in their homes, as it's always been. Well, their equities in their homes. In, with the Great Depression, people that had buried cash in their backyard ended up be, being okay after the Depression uh, because they were still at their cash. They couldn't get them out of the banks. But so what's going to so happen now the making, is listen. the government is going to recall the Federal Reserve promissory notes, and they're going to start issuing new dollars from the I, banks, and all the people are going to have to give their promissory notes back, and they'll have a certain amount of time to do it and then they'll get taxed well, that's on what it he said happened yeah. in which country so which what is the reference India. again the currency reset yeah the they currency made reset the point, the, the, point I was trying, the point i was making is that there are people who are not that rich but are rich and they're sitting back right now with their feet up as everything burns down around them because what happens is they go to the restaurants and they say you can't open your restaurant anymore and they say but dude I'm, i've got like a three-month buffer too bad six months goes by and now their business is gone but you've got a ton of people who work for certain jobs that don't feel that. Either they're insulated, like it's, it's a job that is essential and can never go away, maybe a supermarket or something, or it's a Walmart or something like that. And you have people who work certain jobs, day trading or some kind of financial service, and they can just sit back. And there are certainly people who, let's say they own a, ch- a bunch of chain restaurants. Maybe there's a guy who owns, you know, 50, uh, I don't know, Little Caesars or Wendy's. Well, all of his employees are out of work. All of his managers are out of work and they're all done. They can't pay their rent and they're starving. But this guy's got a net worth of like seven million. So he sits back and says, We shut all the buildings down. We sold them off. I'm rich forever. I got nothing to worry yeah, about. That's what the Native American I mean, chiefs did. I mean, just they got look bought at, off. Look at Bill Gates. Bill Gates ten years ago promised to donate all of his wealth to charity. He had fifty three billion dollars then. Today, after he said he was going to donate all of his money, he has $115 billion. You know why he said that, though? When, when did he say that? 2010. 2010. Yep. 
you had all these ultra rich people being like, we're going to we're going to do the right thing and, and, and donate our money. Why? We just had a massive economic collapse and people were starting to yell, rabble, rabble, rabble. And then we got and then he announces things like this. You know, we saw mm-hmm. uh, after the 2008 financial right, crisis when people were really mad and that sentiment was bubbling up, which ultimately became Occupy Wall Street mm-hmm. when people were like the fat cats are super rich. And so what happens with Warren Buffett? Remember when Warren Buffett was like, we got to give our money yeah. away. It's not because they're like, I know deep down in my heart. Yeah. It's because they're like, if 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 the if it hits the fan, they're coming to my house with pitchforks. So I remember when Mark Zuckerberg announced he was giving his money away and they reported like Mark Zuckerberg to donate all his money. He was giving it to an LLC to mm-hmm. hold to bypass the death tax or the, yep. or the estate tax. And many people don't realize most charities are utter scams and they're a way for rich people just to launder their money. And that's exactly what happens in many instances. Not all of them, of course. There are some good there, legitimate there, some, charities. There's some good ones like yeah. the one that the Bidens ran where all, yeah. all 90, 95% of the money went to salaries. Or the Clinton Global down. Initiative. That was a yes. great charity course, endeavor charity, that Jeffrey yeah. Epstein even donated to a large <laughs> sum of money. Yeah. <laughs> talking know, about benevolent who would have thought? Yeah. But also, you know, yeah. the best investment, according to Bill Saudi Gates, Arabia. the best in- investment, according to Bill Gates, is, of course, vaccines, which he says you get a 20 to one return on. He said that. Bill Gates said that. Yes. Okay, but hold CNBC. on. Hold on. Hold on. He is in a business, I did watch man. this. Yes. And he didn't say the best investment is vaccines because of a 20 to 21. What he said was the best investment has been in vaccine research because I've saved many lives. He then later said, I also got a 20 to 1 return on my investment. Yes, that, that, that should be noteworthy. That should <laughs> just, be questioned but just, there. But I appreciate the full context right, because right, right. you need the full context. Well, the, the, the I reason, just shortened it. The reason I tell that context is because the fact checks all say false. Right. And it's like false. Bill Gates did not you say show he got rich off it's vaccines. It's like a mathematical proof. They and give so, you an F if so you don't when show I, the entire proof. When I pull up the, the, uh, the actual fact checks, they're claiming what you said isn't true using a, 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 f- a false framing. So when you know what the actual truth is and say, yes, he said the best investment was helping people and save their lives. And I happen to have made a 21 return. That's the full context. You can't fact check that because that's the fact check truth. Yep. Uh, another thing to really think about with this kind of financial reckoning that's happening right now, a lot of people are talking about the stock market's great. The stock market is strong. All of that is just artificially inflated fake numbers. And just to kind of test it out, I invested $100 into the stock market in September. And I also invested $100 into Bitcoin It's in September. So as far as my uh, like stock market investment, which was just the kind of I general think, exchange, I, we get it. I got $100, $100, I'm left with 100 and around $12, $13. With Bitcoin, I already have $204. Yeah, uh, but, but here's what you got to understand w- about Bitcoin. Investment. Bitcoin's value, people don't get it. Of course, they don't. Let, let, me, let, me, let me tell you something very, very simple. Right now, when people are dead set on fiat currencies, the value of Bitcoin is just a currency protocol. Meaning if I want to send someone money very quickly, I buy the Bitcoin, send it to Luke. Luke sells the Bitcoin. U.S. dollars to U.S. dollars transacted immediately using Bitcoin as a form of protocol. So I don't care what the value of Bitcoin is. I just care that my the immediate hundred dollar value transfers to somebody who asked for it and transfers out. Luke gets a hundred dollars cash. I get a hundred dollars cash, and there's a small fee in between. But the people who are trading on it and buying more and more of it are controlling that protocol. Which means, in the future, as Bitcoin becomes more and more scarce, people who want to use it for its rapid transaction technology are going to have to buy it from people who are holding onto it and saying only for you know. Ten thousand dollars per coin. They're like, I don't care. I'm 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 buying it and then selling it in ten seconds. Mm-hmm. What do I care what you're selling it for? Well, that's why more and more people are seeing it as a store of value. They're kind of seeing it as gold. And there's other cryptocurrencies that they kind of use in order to have these faster kind of transactions. I don't want to name any because I don't want to be. I was just thinking the same thing, thing can, man. Can I say the craziest thing anyone's ever said about Bitcoin? Go ahead. Yeah. What is Max Kaiser saying right now about the price of Bitcoin? Do you know? I'm that rich. it's going to go hyperbolic He's even 28, higher 000. from here. 28. Yep. By you know, when? You, you, uh, th- I think this year. I think he's saying this year. You know You know what I think? I don't have a timeline prediction, but I would not be surprised to see Bitcoin at a million bucks per coin. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not kidding. Yeah. And I'm not saying in a year or two or three, well, five, if, if ten. The, I'm just if, saying. If the Weimar Germany is any, you know, any historical impact on, but, or but, what would you say, any reference to what's going to, on? Yeah. If, another if thing dollar, we have to understand I, I mean, I mean, buying power right now. It's relative to the I'm dollar. Saying, I'm know? saying buying power. I mean, maybe, maybe. So if we, the we have, goes, dollar goes down 10,000%, Bitcoin goes up 10,000%, just like in the blink of an eye because we're relating is, it to the, the value I'm, of the I'm dollar. I'm saying consider the buying power of the dollar right now, and I would think a Bitcoin at some point would be comparable 
possible to a million bucks. And the reason is because Bitcoin can only, it's, 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 it's entropy. It's Bitcoin, a scarce entity. No, it's, not, yeah. it's not just that. It can only be destroyed. So if people need to use Bitcoin for transactions and it's the, it's, it has the most confidence, many look, these other coins, they come in, they go. Then over the next several years, we're going to see a decreasing amount of Bitcoins, but an increase in the utility and the, and the need for it. More and more people will adopt it and more and more people uh, uh, and, and, and less and less coins will exist. That means the only thing Bitcoin can do is go up, but people don't realize it. You hear these financial people saying things like, it makes no sense that the price of Bitcoin is so high. It doesn't, you know, I don't understand because they don't get it. Most people, I shouldn't say most people, but a lot of people who are transacting Bitcoins, it's like I mentioned, how can I get a quick, some quick cash to Luke? I buy, I go to a website, I buy Bitcoin, it transfer takes, to Luke. It Luke takes a few days for you to get it though. Like if you go to Coinbase and buy it, it takes If like you three go days. through the KYC official establishment yeah. kind of Which is way. know yes, your customer. But, but this KYC. is the crazy thing about Bitcoin. I could have a million dollars, $2 million, $10 million all in a passcode in my head and I could go anywhere and open that wallet anytime that's without so anyone awesome. stopping me or taking it away from me. And that's, and that's a huge That's the way it should be. Because the government our... can't regulate it. It can't tax it. Of course, with Bitcoin, they, they could they, see they, all the transactions they can see where it Imagine goes. if you could. They're, 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 they are taxing but it. But Monero, are very, they can't. There are very vague and weird rules about it that still have. It's just it's just a, an utter mess with how the government's treating this. But more importantly, Bitcoin is the first of its kind. But there's other coins out there, privacy coins, yeah. whether Monero or Monero Zcash, that allow people to have Zcash. their coins uh, privately with them and privately transact with them without a middle person being able to see every little transaction like you can with Bitcoin. And another important aspect to really understand here is that Bitcoin is the first of its kind. It's not perfect, right. but it shows you that there's a new technological revolution like the printing press that is here, that is right now, that's going to revolutionize how we transact with each other. And there's a huge element of it trying to make it a statist, corporatist, government nightmare that's going to track, trace, and database you. We have to understand there's a big element of that, especially with Venezuela, Russia, and other countries, even the Federal Reserve and these big banks talking about creating their own coins when they know every little thing about you. And then there's another big battle happening right now with individuals with, I think it's Dash, Monero, Zcash, and other institutions that are trying to make it more of a privacy, freedom, liberty-oriented technology that will liberate and free people. But it could go either way. And it could be a tool that could enslave us or it could be a tool that could free us. But right now that battle is raging. I know I know a lot of people who are just douche flutes that want to drive Lamborghinis and have little e-girls surrounding them because they made a bunch of money on the but but and, and the market has been filled with a lot of those douche flutes. But there's also another element that that is very important that came from the this kind of Ron Paul liberty and the fed movement that is still there that is still integral that is still fighting for this basic human right of privacy that i think is extremely important and stop looking at the numbers stop looking at the gains stop trying to get rich look at the possibility here of actually having a technology that could be incredible for humanity sure 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 yes but look at what's happening around us when we look at the printing of 35% of all U.S. dollars in, in 10 months. And you and, and people are posting. Listen, listen I brought this up because I saw leftists, Bernie Sanders, progressive socialist types mocking capitalism. And they were like, look at this. It's going to be like Weimar Germany. You know what else was like Weimar Germany? Antifa in the streets fighting with people yep. on the right. We see the, the Proud Boys going out, burning things, fighting people. Antifa, four Proud Boys apparently get stabbed, put in critical condition, have to go to the hospital. Proud Boy in, uh, or I'm sorry, not a Proud Boy, Patriot Prayer in Portland gets two bolts to the chest. I think you're right this is, on, this, man. Listen, it's, it's, it's extremely destabilizing, printing this money like crazy, telling people they can't work. And what are we seeing right now? In New York, they're saying we're going into full lockdown. New York said full lockdown, indoor dining gone. And how are they doing during the winter storm? There were some photos that came out that it's showed insane. people literally... Uh, with a mask on, full winter gear on, just trying tr trying to eat in this yes. huge snow flurry. Could you imagine because like of these insane government protocols? Could you imagine like ordering spaghetti and like <laughs> it, com it comes out and there's a blizzard, <laughs> and then you're sitting there eating, and then after like five minutes, it's just an, an ice block, Frozen. and you're like yeah. <laughs> frozen as, again. As undercover New York City police officers are walking around trying to catch you to destroy you and put you in jail.
Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. So come back to check us out when we go live. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. And we are also available on all podcast platforms for free. If you want to listen to us there, thanks for hanging out and we will see you all next time.